Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we're going to expand the utility of the Motor Controls Trainer Board by upgrading the previously examined manual motor starter to a manual reversing motor starter incorporating a drum or cam switch. Before we begin, let me remind you, I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules, follow the code. It's there for a reason, to protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. Let us begin. Recall we installed a manual motor starter on our motor controls trainer board in a previous application's exercise. The manual motor starter not only serves to make or break connection to a motor, but also protect the motor from sustained overload conditions. Recall that a hardwired manual motor starter fixes direction of rotation. To change direction of rotation, a technician must lock out and tag out the system, swap any two hardwired phase connections, and return it to service. This particular hardwired manual motor starter rotates the motor clockwise. This particular hardwired manual motor starter rotates the motor counterclockwise. Applications that necessitate frequent reversal of a motor are better suited for manual reversing motor starters making use of a drum or cam switch. Ordinarily, drum switches are not rated to make or break inrush or full load current, but rather simply swap applied phase sequence as seen by the motor. The act of making or breaking connection to a motor and protecting the motor from sustained overload conditions still belongs to the manual motor starter. The drum switch simply saves a technician the trouble of manually rewiring the circuit every time you want to switch directions. This particular drum switch is something I scavenged. The wiring diagram shows no connection is made in the center off position. In the forward position, applied phase sequence as seen by the motor is such that it rotates in one direction. In the reverse position, applied phase sequence as seen by the motor is such that it rotates in the opposite direction. When the drum switch is wired between the manual motor starter and placed in the off position, the closure of the motor starter does not start the motor. Note good practices dictate that the drum switch not make connection, but rather the manual motor starter. For this reason, the manual motor starter is first placed in the open position, then the drum switch is rotated to the forward position, then the manual motor starter is closed. In this case, applied phase sequence as seen by the motor is such that it rotates in one direction. To stop the motor, the manual motor starter is first open to reverse direction, First, the drum switch is rotated to the reverse position, then the manual motor starter is closed. In this case, applied phase sequence, as seen by the motor, is such that it rotates in the opposite direction. To stop the motor, the manual motor starter is first open, then the drum switch is placed in the off position. Again, drum switches are not ordinarily rated to make or break inrush or full load current. That's the job of the manual motor starter. The drum switch's only purpose is to swap applied phase sequence and it sure beats constantly having to rewire a system every time you want a motor to rotate in the opposite direction. Cost for the setup was pretty minimal. After all, this drum switch was scavenged for free. Later applications exercises and lectures will demonstrate mechanically, electrically, and push-button interlocked magnetic reversing motor starters that do not necessitate an operator's direct closure of the primary contacts. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.